Anet. Uh, I'm the marketing manager for Analytics Creator. Uh, and yes, I will be doing the introductions very shortly. Uh, I see Erin has uh, uh, started recording the session. Um, so if everyone is there, I think let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just one sec for me. Uh, Uh, just let me summarize uh, the steps. So Richard uh, will be starting to our call and he will share some uh, useful information about Analytics Creator uh, when we have started, uh, what we are doing, and then Dimitri will take over the word, uh, word and will show us uh, our product uh, which he developed uh, and will do a short demo for us. And uh, I want to repeat it again. If you have any questions, uh, you can raise your hand by using Teams or you can write your questions in chat. If you write your question, we will be asking your question uh, to our speaker for you. And if you raise your hand, then uh, after the section, when the section finish, uh, you will be able to ask your question directly to the speaker. Sorry, Richard, yeah, you can take over. All right. Okay. Well, welcome everyone to our, our webinar on uh, Data Vault 2, our fully automated design and development with uh, PDR on top. Uh, we're excited to show you uh, how analytics, analytics Creator can simplify and acceler accelerate the process of building a Data Vault 2 data warehouse and integrating it with the Power with sorry integrating it with Power BI for a comprehensive visualization and, and analysis of your data. Um, we're going to go through and Dimitri will show you uh, very clearly how to uh, how analytics creator can help you with Data Vault 2 methodology to automate the entire design and development process of your data warehouse. This makes it easier and faster to build a scalable and reliable data warehouse. Uh, we'll also showcase how you can use uh, uh, Power BI on top of this uh, to get insightful uh, and interactive data analytics. Um, before we get started uh, on this, can I just get an indication from from everybody? If you can just drop a thumbs up or something like that in the chat, how many of you have actually used an automation tool for your data warehousing projects? Okay, there are quite a, few, quite a few that have already started using them. Um, and can I, with a thumbs up, get uh, an indication of how many are using uh, Azure or the Microsoft Analytics stack on their data projects? Great. As a estimation, um, could you just drop down uh, roughly your time estimate, uh, estimated time that you spend on uh, data modeling or ETL developments in your project? Just please drop them straight into the chat. No one, so it seems like everyone's going fine with it. <laughs> All right, so we've got somebody that spends the entire day doing it. Fantastic. Ten to fifteen percent of our time. All right, so there's quite a lot of of. of uh, uh, of everyone's time being spent on a, on a daily basis with this. So let's have a look and see how um, Analytics Create can help you automate uh, some of this. 
All right, we'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so any analytics creator provides a data automation for analytical applications, which is benefit beneficial to beginners in the field as well as, as experts. By, genera by generating the source code, instead of programming, programming it manually, Analytics Creator makes data integration and the ETL process very easy and very efficient. Analytics Creator also orchestrates the cycle of warehouses and data marts from design, development, uh, change and deployment. So with Analytics Creator, you can achieve agility Reduce your costs significant, significantly. I don't know why I'm struggling with that word. Um, even up to ten times faster than traditional methods of uh, ETL. Analytics Creator has helped many organisations achieve automation and agility in their analytical applications. Let's take a look at some of our customer examples and to see what or how Analytics Creator has transformed the data warehousing and uh, BI process. Our first uh, example of this is a customer in the automotive sector. Um, from a confidentiality perspective, we can't reveal their names, um, but we know with them using Anal Analytics Creator, this company was able to save 80% of their time and costs for their data warehousing projects at uh, IT uh, controlling in the past year alone. The significant improvement Achieves, achieved through the uh, automation process allows them to focus more on valuable tasks instead of spending co countless hours of you know coding and uh, and debugging code. Uh, the second example is probably somebody that quite a few of you know uh, in the food and beverage uh, sector, uh, a crowd called My Muesli. Um, before they started working with uh, with Analytics Creator, they were really beginners in the data warehousing space. They were pretty much only using cubes um, and didn't really understand, you know, dedicated data warehousing. So, with the help of Analytics Creator, they were able to create a full data warehouse uh, for sales, and that was literally took four days of consulting. Mamusli has grown from this, where they've got four full-time developers running uh, full data warehouses from production to finance and literally everything that they need. Our next client is in the uh, real estate se sector and they had uh, challenges with improving their, their um, development time. With Analytics Creator, they were able to achieve this result 20 times faster, uh, specifically on the on their ingestion layer. Um, if you guys want more information on on this specific example, uh, we've actually got a great YouTube video on it where we've redone this in a in a sandbox environment. Um, so please have a look at our, our YouTube channel and uh, uh, have a look at, at what we did through that. Um, so, just so that you know, our vision at Anal Analytics Creators, we strive to be independent and provide a pure design time tool with no runtime necessary. Okay. Our tool is designed to create a holistic meta model of your business and data, with the copyright being transferred to you, either as a partner or as a customer. Our focus is 100% uh, on the Microsoft Analytics stack and uh, Azure to literally to provide the best results for users. Uh, our repository is also open, so you can develop your own add-ons. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to add a separate database like a MariaDB, uh, you can add that on and the source code stays, uh, stays with you. So, how do we go about all of this? Analytics Creator has got a, a five-step approach. Um, the first step involves uh, connecting all your data sources, and we can connect to over 250 data sources in, in Analytics Creator. From there, uh, Analytics Creator picks up the metadata of your sources, and at this stage, you've got the option either to edit 
uh, edit your metadata, redefine it, um, and describe it properly in, in terms of uh, what you're doing with it. Yeah. The third step, the intelligent wizard helps you with the design process. This is based on the meta metadata description um, and analytics analytics creator will draft a sorry will draft a, a data warehouse model for you um, in the fourth step once this model is in place you can start your development work and this includes your calculations your cleansing adding dimensions joins defining kpi literally anything that push the solution to either your azure environment or to your sql server so this gives us a great streamlined approach and very efficient way of uh, designing and developing, developing your analytical solutions. Um, just to have a look at the architecture of the process, uh, in the first part, um, which is the, the big ring around there, um, it's uh, getting all the, all the raw data from various sources, be it your ERP, ERP system, your CRM, MRP, if needs be, any other source. This daughter, daughter, data uh, is then stored in a uh, Azure Lakehouse uh, data warehouse, you name it. Um, and we can literally use, you know, Data Vault, Kimball, real time or on premises, any other storage, whatever storage option or modeling you prefer. Uh, in the third step, we, we transform, the, transform the data into a more tabular uh, column-based model, okay? OLAP, Power BI Premium, or any other particular model that you want to use. Um, in step four, analytics creates a holistic data model by consolidating all this, all this data. Uh, step five is the uh, source code generator, which we'll see later in the demonstration. Um, which is automated based on the models that, you, that have been created. Uh, finally, then in step six, uh, we can access this, these analytical solutions uh, you know, through the analytics creator process. Um, there are a huge uh, range of use cases on our website um, that show you the flexibility and the power of uh, an analytics creator. Uh, these literally cover anything from, you know, building new data warehouses, modernizing existing ones, uh, using data vault uh, models, using intelligent wizards, uh, automating data lakehouse or Azure Synapse, you know, and, and quite a few more. Uh, please have a look at our website, um, have a look at those, and if there are any questions, please reach out to any one of us. Um, so in a nutshell, Analytics Creator has got a bunch of benefits uh, that you can use uh, uh, if you use it in your environment. Um, first one is saving time and money. Obviously with automation, you, you're significantly reducing development time and cutting costs. Um, it, it is so easy to use. Analytics Creator's um, intuitive interface and intelligent uh, wizard make it easy literally for people that are just stepping into the uh, uh, data warehouse realm um, and experts that literally use it on a daily basis we can reduce risk um, in it you know by um, uh, not having uh, so much human error um, and ensuring a, a consistent out, uh, output uh, it provides an, uh, uh, an agile uh, environment um, it reduces your your uh, compliance and governance risks. Um, there's a lot more available on the website uh, on this. I'm not going to delve too much into this. Um, and before I hand over to Dimitri, uh, I just quickly thought I'd highlight here um, that for the past four years, um, Analytics Creator has been cons consistently placed in the top right-hand quadrant of both Gartner and uh, Box surveys. Um, so, you know, we're uh, very proud of it and it's a testament to the flexibility, power and effectiveness uh, of what Analytics Creator can bring to the market. Um, so, 
if there are any questions, uh, please drop them into the chat here. Alternatively, uh, there's a great uh, slide here um, where you can contact us. Um, yeah, other than that, I will hand over to Dimitri, who's going to show us uh, how to create a fully automated design and development uh, with PBI on top using analytics creator. Dimitri? Okay, uh, then I will continue. Wait a moment. I will present my screen. One moment, please. Okay, um, I hope you can see my screen. Uh, Richard, can you confirm, please? Yes, perfect. Okay, very good. Then uh, let me start uh, analytics creator, and now um, we will create um, the new uh, data warehouse project. Okay, you. Uh, today we will create uh, the new data warehouse based on SAP as data source and we will use data vault uh, architecture uh, for this data warehouse. That, let's call it GMO SAP example. Okay, now uh, the new uh, project repository will be created. As Richard said, uh, project repository, this is a database located in my case locally on my SQL server. And this database contains the full information about my data warehouse. This, data warehouse, this database is uh, often, uh, you can access uh, it, you can um, even modify data in this uh, database. Uh, this is the uh, core uh, of analytics creator, uh, this repository uh, containing the data warehouse information. Well, uh, now we created the empty repository and um, first, uh, okay, uh, there are two ways how we can create the new data warehouse. Uh, first, this is a top-down approach. We can start to create uh, the models, the effects, dimensions, and so on, and uh, then uh, connect uh, this model to uh, the sources which we have. Or uh, we will use data-driven approach. Uh, we will um, create the connectors to the existing data source and uh, will create the data warehouse based on uh, our data source. I will use uh, SAP as a data source. And there are two ways in how I can obtain the metadata from my SAP system. First, I can add the usual connector. Uh, add connector. Analytics data support, uh, supports different kinds of uh, data sources, uh, like SQL Server, Oracle, I don't know, uh, plain text files, AliDB uh, or ADBC uh, sources, and uh, we can uh, read uh, the metadata directly from uh, the SAP systems. Therefore, for example, if I will, I can create the connector to the SAP system, I have to extend the information about this connector and uh, well, uh, read the information from my SAP system. But uh, we have another way. Mm, there is another way we can uh, uh, use uh, the meta connectors. Let me show you what this meta connector. I click here on import connector from the cloud. And uh, for example, I have here uh, the connector sub F5. Meta connector, this is just uh, the information about the metadata in my source system. In our case, meta connector sub F5 contains information about all uh, SAP tables related to sub uh, financial and controlling area. You can see uh, there is a list of the well-known SAP tables like um, EKPF or 
containing the accounting information, the SEC containing the accounting positions, uh, I don't know, KNA1 with our customer information, LFA1 with the vendor information, and so on. It's just just um, the information about the SAP tables related to the specific uh, area. And uh, you can uh, start to create uh, your data warehouse based on SAP without to have access to the uh, SAP system. You can create such uh, meta connectors by yourself, no, no problem. You can uh, store uh, the metadata um, uh, which you got from the SAP source system and the cloud. and um, uh, it is very easy to create the uh, own meta connectors. We can provide you with uh, some uh, meta connectors uh, related to, for example, uh, SIP area. Okay. Uh, there are some noises. Uh, sorry. Richard. Okay, no noises yeah, anymore. Yeah, okay, very good. Cool. Somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, then uh, let's continue. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, this uh, possibility to use the meta connectors give you uh, mm, uh, <laughs> meta connectors give you the possibility to create the data warehouses uh, without to have access uh, to the source system. For example, we can start to create the SAP data warehouse without uh, on your notebook. Uh, without uh, to have access to the uh, SAP system. Okay, and uh, let's do it. Uh, okay, we added this connector. Uh, very important, uh, have not only the information about uh, the tables related to SAPFI, uh, but we have the information about the relationships between uh, the tables. For example, I have this information about uh, the relationship between uh, the KPF and SEC tables. Uh, and I can see the relationship will be uh, done using these four columns. Uh, and this information is very mm, useful later when the data warehouse will be generated. Okay. Uh, and then let's uh, start. We will use a data warehouse wizard uh, to create um, uh, the data warehouse. Okay, I started the wizard. Now you can see the list of the tables uh, containing in our connector. Okay, uh, I will take some tables like uh, booking uh, headers, booking positions, uh, customers, vendors, the accounts, company codes, and document types. Uh, we support or Data Warehouse Wizard supports uh, different uh, uh, kind or different architectures. Uh, classic means gimbal uh, with facts and dimensions. Or in our case, for example, we will use Data Vault 2 uh, as, uh, the, uh, for, for the uh, architecture of, uh, or for the modeling of our Data Warehouse. Okay. Uh, here on bottom, uh, you can see the tables which we will use in our data warehouse. We will import every table. Okay, I will create um, the hubs and satellites for every table except BSEC. And for BSEC, I will create the link uh, table. And additionally, I will create the link object for the KFF table because the KFF table mm, contains uh, uh, the, um, uh, relationships to uh, some other uh, tables. Uh, we will create dimensions for every uh, table which we import, and we will create the fact uh, transformation for the SEC table. The SEC table, this is a table with the finest granularity in our case. It contains the booking positions, and this is our uh, good candidate for uh, the uh, effect transformation in our data star. Okay, let me check. We will create um, two link objects uh, and uh, one, two, three, six uh, hub and satellite objects. Okay, and 
Okay, next here on this uh, screen, we can define the um, name temp as a templates or name uh, conventions for the object which we uh, generate. For example, all dimensions will have team prefix in the front, fact will have fact prefix in the front. I don't know. The hubs we will have will have hub suffix uh, at the end and so on. Okay, here uh, we have. Sorry, Dimitri. Yes, please. You. Uh, there are two questions. I think mm -hmm. before yes, you go please. too much forward, I will ask it to you. So the first question is from Henny. Is there integration with Git? Uh, what about deployment in a team? This is the first question. Uh, sorry, what's about deployment? Uh, sorry, I don't. Uh, uh, what about deployment in a team? Uh, okay, we will speak about deployment later. First, I will show you how to create the data warehouse, and then I will show you how to deploy the data mm -hmm. warehouse. This is uh, mm -hmm. step number, I don't know, 10 maybe uh, in the full uh, development okay. process. Okay, and also ask uh, is there integration with uh, Git? Uh, yes, mm, uh, you can store uh, this, um, the integration. Yes. We, we work on the uh, integration with the Git. At the moment, you can store your repository as a text file, and this text file you can check in in the Git. And uh, uh, this is an uh, integration which we can offer you at the moment. Uh, but we work on the uh, better integration uh, with the team that you can check in, check out. And directly from analytics creator. As I said, at the moment, you can store, uh, there is a button save to file uh, in the project. Your file will be stored as a text file or as a SQL file, and you can uh, store uh, this uh, file in, uh, in the Git. This is uh, a possibility which you have at the moment. Okay. And can we have uh, one more question? Mm -hmm, uh, please. Sorry to interrupt. It's about this topic. Uh, all these table descriptions are mm -hmm. uh, autumn generated, or these need to be defined in source uh, DB. I don't know what is the. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Regarding uh, regarding how we created this meta um, connector, it's very easy. We um, uh, read uh, uh, this information. We got this information from the SAP system. You can, for example, create a connection to the uh, SAP system. You can read the information uh, from uh, your SAP system, and you can store this information in the file or in the cloud and use this information later in your project without to have access to the SAP system. And it is possible every time to connect one, I, 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 let, let me, <laughs> I will continue. I, I will show you how you can uh, use your meta connector, but first let me uh, click on finish and uh, the data warehouse will be generated and then I can answer uh, your questions. Uh, and we will not rest, waste the time. Okay, uh, regarding this meta connector, as I said, uh, it is very easy. There is no difference between the meta connector and true connector. The only difference is that the meta connector isn't not is not bound to the uh, source system. It's uh, it, it can work uh, apart from your source system without to have the connection. But you can still continue to create your data warehouse. And it is very easy to how to create the meta connector. You get the information you read the information from your source system and store it somewhere in our cloud or in the file and later you can use it very easy and uh, you can uh, every time connect your uh, meta connector to the real source system and compare your metadata it is very important for example now we have here the uh, information about the SAP tables but this is a generic information maybe you have some uh, user specific columns for example in your tables set columns uh, and uh, to uh, get uh, the set columns you sh uh, there is a um, menu button refresh sources refresh use sources refresh all sources in this case uh, to refresh uh, uh, the meta information you can uh, click uh, and get into the properties of this connector, add the connection string to the SAP system, and then uh, your connector will be bound to SAP system and you can refresh the metadata information stored in your, uh, in, in your meta connector. This is how you can uh, use this meta connector. Okay, but uh, let's continue. You can see now, this is a, a uh, 
it was house structure created by our uh, data warehouse wizard. And let's take a look uh, what we have here. Uh, on the left side, you can see the sources, different data sources, uh, for example, backup F table, this is a SAP table containing uh, the booking header information, uh, okay, all columns and so on with different descriptions. Mm, okay. Okay, uh, then we import this uh, information into uh, the according tables in the staging layer. You can see here, this is a staging layer. For example, imp backup ref. Very easy. We import just the, the, the data from this table into uh, this table. You, but how do we import this information? Uh, there are two ways. First, you can use integration service packages, which we generate for you. And to import the data from the SAP system, we use uh, the component of the um, Telbalt. Uh, this is the Telbalt components, which we use. Telbalt is a very known company, which provides uh, us with the possibility to read the data from the SAP system. Uh, and we can generate for you the SSS packages uh, using, uh, which will use uh, the Telbalt uh, SSS components to import data. Uh, to generate the packages, you don't need the Telbyte license, but to execute the packages, uh, the according license should be uh, available. Uh, but as I said, uh, we generate the packages for you and you don't need uh, the Telbyte licenses to generate the packages. Okay, uh, there is a definition of the data import. It's very easy. Okay, the, the, the source column, uh, target column. What is important, you can define uh, here different uh, filters. For example, I will generate, I will, I, I, I will use a filter. Uh, let me show you. I will, I, I am creating the, a new uh, SSL, a uh, new variable. Uh, and for example, I will say that uh, the co column per year, uh, uh, this is a business year, uh, is equal, for example, this variable per year. Okay. Uh, and using um, this such filters, I can um, I can uh, import only uh, the data, the new data, for example, or the changed data. Uh, it is very uh, powerful um, mechanism how to implement, for example, differential data loading. And um, I will do the same with, for example, BASEC company, uh, BASEC tables, sorry, and uh, we'll add this filter. Uh, year is equal to year variable uh, to the for, for these two big uh, tables. Uh, I will only import the data from the year 2013. Okay, um, then uh, on the next step, Dimitri, we have, Dimitri, sorry, yes, please. Dimitri, before we move on, two, two, two more questions. Um, the one relates specifically to the data source um mm -hmm. uh where's the question uh, uh i lost the question on the data source uh, I, um, I can how, how will it work with the with the data data source if you don't if you don't have uh for example foreign keys defined in your external data source mm -hmm. um, uh, how do we import that data um into of course uh, i understand the, Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, uh, if you uh, don't have the information about the uh, relationships between your table, you should maintain this information manually. In this case, this is uh, exactly uh, the uh, case uh, uh, of the SIP. Uh, would I get uh, this uh, metadata information from the SIP directly? Uh, there is no information about the relationships. Therefore, we got this information from the SIP and then we added manually this information information about the relationships between the tables. Then we store this connector as meta connector. This meta container connector contains more 
information then SAP can uh, give us, uh, as I said, uh, contains the information about the relationships. And uh, relationships information should be maintained. Uh, ex uh, especially for SIP system, uh, we have uh, the script which can provide you uh, with uh, this relationship information uh, as a um, uh, because uh, all column names in the SIP system are uh, stable. For example, I don't know, uh, booking, uh, I don't know, booking date uh, called always boo dot, or I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, mandan, mandan called uh, always uh, MN. Okay, the column names are uh, stable uh, in the SIP system. Therefore, we can use the column names uh, to detect uh, the relationship between uh, the table and we can provide you with a, a script which can uh, create uh, automatically the relationships for uh, the SIP systems. But if you have uh, the data source containing no information about the foreign keys, for example, you should maintain this information. Uh, you should add this information manually to your uh, connector. Therefore, uh, usually you mm, uh, should create uh, the, in the first step. You will create a connector. You will um, maintain the information about the uh, the relationship uh, ships between the tables, and in the next step, you will uh, create other objects uh, in the data warehouse. Okay. Okay, but uh, now let's take a look on the objects created by analytics creator by the PSAT. Okay, let's take a look, I don't know, on this LFA1 table. Set filter here. Um, uh, we have here this table, uh, imp LFA1, uh, containing the imported data from the LF1 way, uh, uh, one, uh, LFA1 table. Uh, you can see all uh, the column, columns, and um, there is one, uh, Calculated column added. Okay, there are two calculated columns added to this um, uh, table. One of them, this is Paul HAPIT. This is the uh, hash key of uh, this uh, LFA1 table. Uh, you can see this table has. Moment. Ah, sorry. Uh, this table uh, has two. Uh, Columns, mandant and uh, lieferant number, LEF, okay, vendor, uh, vendor number. Uh, these two columns, uh, uh, this is the primary key of this uh, table. And analytics data generate for you, uh, generates for you the uh, hash key. To generate the hash key, we use the calculated columns. And you can see here this statement, which will be used to generate this uh, hash key. And in this statement, you can see uh, this macro at uh, get vault hash with two parameters. This get vault hash, this is the macro. Let, I will show you what is a macro. Get vault hash, edit macro. Macro, this is nothing more than uh, the SQL statement. In our case, you can see this is the SQL statement uh, containing uh, placeholders. This double dot one, this is a placeholder, double dot two, this placeholder, double dot three, the placeholder, and so on. And later, when I call this macro, uh, double dot one will be replaced by the first parameter, double dot two by the second parameter, and so on. And uh, the missing parameter will be replaced by now. Um, and this macro uh, provides us this. Uh, will, uh, can help us uh, to create uh, the hash key. We use first the con concat uh, function uh, to build the string uh, containing every parameter which we um, provide, uh, which we use uh, in the call the macro. Then we generate the uh, hash key using in our case MD5 algorithm. And then we convert uh, the resulting uh, uh, hash key into the var binary uh, and this macro will be used in our uh, uh, to generate the hash key in our table and uh, you should 
you can see the old hub idea. This is a persistent calculator or computed problem. Uh, persistent means uh, when the data will be stored in this table, the hash key uh, will be generated automatically and will be materialized. Therefore, when you later access to the data in your table, uh, you shouldn't calculate the, uh, the hash key every time when you access the data, but uh, the hash key is already stored together with your data. And you can see in the table definition, okay, this is the table definition. Okay, where is it? Sorry. Oh, one. Exactly. You can see here, this is a Vault Hub ID, and instead of the macro, we can see here the macro text, and uh, the first parameter is replaced by mandant, the second parameter is replaced by a uh, vendor number, and all other parameters are replaced by now. Okay, and this is how do we uh, generate the hash keys, and uh, very important, if I later will uh, 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 Instead to use MD, uh, instead to use, for example, MD5 algorithm, I will use uh, SHA1 algorithm to generate the hash key. I only have to modify my macro, and everywhere uh, where macro was used, uh, all table definitions will be automatically modified uh, to use the new uh, hash algorithm. Okay, but uh, and then uh, we you can see here two uh, transformations, this blue uh, square, this is a transformation. Transformation in our case, this is a view. We have here the hub and satellite transformations. Uh, the hub transformation, uh, this is a view, contains three columns, the valid hub ID and the key fields, uh, mandant and referent number or vendor number. Uh, okay, this is very uh, okay. simple view. We only expose from the table in LFA1 these three columns, nothing more. Okay, and this is the second transformation or second view. It contains all columns from the uh, uh, LFA1 table plus Paul Hub ID. Okay, where is it? Okay, Paul Hub ID. This is the hash key of this table. Very easy. And what we do as next? Uh, okay, we historicize the data in the persistent staging layer. Okay, for the hub, this is not the true historization. Uh, it is. Uh, Okay, it is like hysterization, but we do not close uh, the missing uh, hash keys. Uh, therefore, only uh, so new uh, um, keys will be added into this uh, uh, historized uh, hub table. Uh, this, is, uh, the, uh, this is not hysterization, but we use a hysterization algorithm to uh, add the data to this uh, hub uh, table. Uh, okay, and then uh, this is a historization of uh, our satellite. Uh, okay, the table itself uh, contains the same columns like um, the uh, uh, main table, like the import table, plus uh, three additional columns. Uh, you can see these columns. One, one moment, please. This is uh, one. Exactly, this is two columns. This is the date from and date two. This is a validity period of specific data row. And uh, uh, the surrogate keys, in our case, this is SATS ID column. This is identity uh, column. Uh, this is the typical uh, slow changing dimension historization in our case. Three additional columns containing the validity period and uh, the surrogate key of specific data row. Okay, um, but uh, let me take a look on, for example, our okay, take this basic table. We, we said uh, we, we will create a, a link transformation from our basic table. And let's take a look on the import table, this basic table, and on the calculated column, create columns created by analytics creator. Well, first, 
There is a uh, vault hub ID column. This is the health key of this uh, uh, table itself. And then we have here uh, one, two, three, four, five additional uh, uh, hash keys. This is a corresponding or referencing hash keys uh, from the tables having relationship with this uh, BASEC table. For example, BASEC table uh, has a relationship to the uh, LFA1 table uh, using these two columns, mandant and referent number number uh, lambda number and uh, mandant and uh, elephant number number this is the, the primary key in the LFA1 table and uh, analysis creator creates for us the corresponding uh, hash key and created for us a uh, additional relationship between uh, the table uh, BASEC and LFA1 at the moment we have two uh, different relationships between these two tables. One of uh, the relationships is uh, using uh, the business key and one uh, additional relationship um, which use uh, the hash keys uh, to, uh, okay, to the, the hash keys. And uh, <clears throat> this is, mm, and for, for every relationship, for every related table, uh, analysis data created here uh, the according hash key. Uh, every hash key, as I said, this is computed, uh, assisted computed column. We can see the, it in the table definition. One moment, the definition. And here you can see this calculated columns created using uh, our uh, hash key macro. And, um, and for example, if I take a look on um, the uh, relationship uh, which this table have. Okay, the references, these references, there's a lot of references, okay. Um, and you can see uh, there are some reference, some business key references using the, which use as a business keys, and there are some uh, data vault references uh, or the uh, hash key references using uh, the hash key. Okay, and, and the next step, uh, we have here uh, two transformations. First of them, this is a typical link transformation. Uh, this link transformation contains uh, every hash key uh, which we have in uh, this uh, source table. Uh, <clears throat> very easy, all hash keys will be exposed by this. Uh, link transformation and uh, the next transformation this is a link sat transformation that contains every uh, column uh, except the hash keys plus uh, the uh, uh, main hash key uh, of the table itself this is uh, the typical link sat transformation and then we uh, historicize or uh, okay we historicize the link sat um, uh, transformation uh, and uh, we store or historicize <laughs> the link itself uh, but we use a do not close um, uh, approach that means uh, if uh, the reference is missing this uh, reference will be not closed in the historization table but remain remains open remains uh, active okay well um, we feel the um, for the uh, the doc header, we said uh, both uh, link uh, and hub and satellites uh, should be generated. Set uh, filter, and you can see for the KPF table, uh, four different objects were generated. This is a satellite, hub, link, and link sat. Okay, link sat in our case. It's not necessary because uh, it contains the same information like uh, the SAT object, and we let me delete it. it is, uh, we don't need this link SAT uh, object. One moment, let's wait until the object is deleted. Okay, come on. So that's a lot of columns, therefore, and the analysator should check if everything is correct okay and now <clears throat> we have three different uh, objects uh, 
created uh, uh, from our backup AF and able uh, link satellite and hub. And uh, okay, uh, as you can see, uh, this backup AF table has, uh, in our case, three different uh, uh, hash keys. One of them, this is a vault hub ID, the hash key of the table itself, and two corresponding hash keys uh, related to the table K001 and K003. Okay, therefore, we can we have here the link containing these three hash keys. We have the, such, uh, the hub containing uh, the hash key itself and uh, um, corresponding uh, primary key columns, and uh, we have one satellite uh, containing all uh, columns of this specific table and vault hub ID this uh, hash key. Okay, and what uh, we do then in our core layer, the filter. Okay. Uh, let me click on Synchronize the Waha. When I click on this button, Synchronize the Waha, uh, the model uh, uh, which I have here on, uh, in, uh, will be materialized and um, the new data warehouse called in our case CWH Demo SIT Data Vault will be created on my SQL Server. Let me show you what I, what I mean and how it... Okay, I will. Okay, in the management studio, uh, our, uh, okay, first, our repository called Demo SIP Data Vault. And we have here two databases related to this repository. First, this is this Repo Demo SIP Data Vault database. This database contains the full information about my data warehouse. You can see, for example, all, I don't know, sources are stored in the table CFG sources and all source columns stored in the table CFG source columns. You can see the structure of this uh, repository is pretty easy. Uh, all tables, I don't know, stored in the, ta in the table, tables and columns in the table, uh, it is columns exactly okay and um, when i click on the button uh sync the uh, the new database will be generated this is this one twh demo sip data vault this database contains the structure of my data warehouse which i model here you can see here there are the import tables there are the staging tables or sister staging tables. You can see the different views, for example, generated by analytics creator. This is our data warehouse. <clears throat> okay. And, uh, well, um, let's take a look on the objects in the core layer, create, core layer created by analytics creator. Starting on the core layers, we, uh, we are we creating facts and dimensions um, because uh, our modeling approach for data mart and core layer this is uh, usually mm, the Kimball uh, modeling uh, where we create the facts and dimensions from the data vault objects and in this case for example we create uh, from the backup F satellite table the dimension team KPF. Let me click on it. Okay, uh, this is a transformation. This is a view in our case. This view will be generated by Analytics Creator. Uh, by the way, Analytics Creator supports different kinds of transformations. Uh, the usual transformation, this is a view, but you can uh, create your own views. In this case, it will be the manual transformation. Uh, you can create the SQL script, store it procedures. You can even uh, create um, the, uh, you can even use, I don't know, externally created uh, integration service packages or batch or accept, um, okay, or uh, external uh, accept programs and uh, um, inject them uh, into analysis creator repository. And in this case, it will be the uh, external transformation. 
and it will um, work uh, as a part of analytics creator. Uh, but in our case, this is a typical regular transformation. Uh, here you can see the table on which will be used in this transformation, and here you can see the columns exposed by this uh, transformation, and this is the view created by analytics creator, just of every column from uh, the uh, uh, table backup of SAT will be um, exposed by this view. Okay, interesting is this fact transformation. Let me show it to you. This is our fact transformation created by analytics creator. Well, and here you can see uh, how uh, how it works, how do we create the uh, facts and dimensions from the uh, data about objects. Uh, the first main table, this is the link table of the BASEC uh, object, of the BASEC table. <laughs> and then uh, we join uh, according satellites uh, to uh, this table. Uh, and uh, additionally, we join, for example, the link table of the backup AF uh, in case uh, you will maybe later add uh, some objects related only to the backup AF table, uh, and we will do it at the moment right now. Uh, let's take a look on the view created by analytics creator. Okay, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, you should understand every table here, at least every satellite table here, this is a historized table. Uh, therefore, uh, it is pretty uh, difficult to join the historized tables because uh, for every hash key there can be several data rows in uh, the uh, according uh, historized table. Every data row contains the different versions of the specific data row. And we to join the tables together, uh, we use a uh, uh, snapshot historization type. Uh, what uh, is it? Uh, we have uh, here, uh, analytics creator creates for us a new table called CFG snapshots. And this table contains at least one data role. One data role with the actual date. The actual date is stored in the column snapshot date. And then we get from every table, which we uh, join here, only the data which are valid for specific snapshot data. And then we can join tables together using our uh, hash key. This is uh, our typical hash key uh, relation, the uh, field center hash key relationships. Uh, in case uh, there is only one data role with the actual date in the snapshot table, our fact transformation will uh, expose, uh, will provide us only with the actual data. But we can uh, add more dates to the snapshot uh, table, for example, end of the last month, end of the last, last month, and so on. Uh, for example, end of the month for every uh, last 12 months. Uh, and in this case, uh, we have access to the previous versions of the data. And uh, this CFG table, uh, this CFG snapshot table, uh, later uh, will be used as snapshot dimension in our data mart layer. And if you have more than one snapshot, uh, you can uh, take a look on your old versions of the data. It's like additional timeline uh, for your uh, data warehouse. Uh, okay, sometimes uh, it is very interesting to have access to the previous uh, versions of the data and not only to the actual data. Okay, uh, then uh, um, uh, let's take a look uh, at the filter. Uh, you can see, for example, there is one table this is this A003 table, doc types. This table uh, is not bound to our uh, fact transformation because this table, T003, has no relationships uh, with the uh, BASEC table, but it has relationships uh, with the backup AF table. And let's add this table to our fact transformation. Uh, you can see we have here the backup F link table, and this link table has uh, the key 
onboarding key, uh, which can be used to uh, join the 003 table. Okay, let me select the 003, 003. And then this is the table number nine, and uh, the KPF link table, this is the table number seven. And let me add the relationship nine and seven. And this is a relationship which I will use. And here we can see that there's a, a zero zero. Oh, so I got the satellite as a hub table. Hub table is not that uninteresting for us. We have to uh, add the, of course, uh, sorry, comment. We have to add the satellite table, not the hub, the zero, zero, three satellite table, okay, fine, and seven, ah, sorry, moment, <laughs> okay, I will do it again, uh, first I have to delete the previously added table, and then I will add the new one, nine, a zero zero three satellite okay. and here nine and seven. Very well. Let's take a look. We can see there is a T003 satellite table, and this table was joined uh, to the, the seven table. The seven, this is a backup of link. Okay, and I will expose uh, the surrogate key from the table number nine. Surrogate key, this is the uh, column SATS ID, and we will call this column FK the 003. Okay, SAT. Okay, then uh, you can see. Uh, uh, the only columns which will be exposed by this fact transformation, this is the surrogate keys. This is that's ID. This is the surrogate key from every uh, working uh, table, historized table. Okay, some of uh, tables are uninteresting for us. For example, the basic link is uninteresting. This link sub table is uninteresting too. Only satellite. Ah, sorry, one moment. Wrong. <laughs> Sorry, link sub table uh, should remain, of course. Mm, one moment, okay. The sec link, it can uh, it, uh, link backup F link is not necessary, but the sec link sub, of course, should remain because this is a satellite of the sec table. Okay, uh, well, uh, I think. Okay, let me add this statement. The statement uh, will be used uh, to. Uh, mm, okay, uh, to provide this uh, unknown member functionality. For example, if our fact transformation uh, has uh, uh, information about the customer missing in the uh, KNA1 table, uh, it will be bound to uh, the unknown member with uh, ID 0. And uh, to do that, we uh, use this uh, is null uh, transformation. Okay. Uh, what I will do additionally. Okay, I will add uh, the calendar uh, dimension. Uh, in the table, in the table, uh, backup PF, uh, uh, one moment, backup PF SAT, of course. Backup PF SAT, this is a table number two. There is a column, who that? This is a booking date, exactly, who that? And this put that column uh, contain uh, the information about the date of my uh, booking, uh, but uh, I will uh, have an, in this place uh, instead of this date the ID from calendar dimension. Uh, Analytics Creator creates, creates for us this calendar dimension. This is this one, Team Calendar. Team Calendar is just, is just the view providing us this uh, calendar information. And uh, together with this calendar uh, dimension, the macro 
uh, date to ID was generated. And this macro uh, can help us to convert uh, the date into ID from calendar dimension. This macro has only one parameter. Uh, this is a um, date parameter, and this uh, date uh, will be converted into ID from calendar dimension. Okay, but SIP uh, provides us with the date in the string format. Therefore, we have here additional macro, this macro called sub subdate to ID. And if I take a look on this macro, first what we do, we convert the SIP date into the real date, and then we call date to ID macro to get the ID from calendar dimension. You can call macros in macros. You can see it here. We convert the SIP date into the date. The string column will be converted into the date, and then the date will be converted into ID from calendar dimension. And we will use the sub date to ID macro to uh, convert this posting date or boot that column into ID from calendar dimension. Sub date to ID, and we can use this alias. This alias, this is just the link to this column store, uh, which we have here in the reference column. Okay, and let me rename this column into fk. Okay, and what I will do additionally, I will rename my uh, in, uh, I, 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 I will add a new friendly name, I will call it underscore the bookings. Uh, this is a name for uh, later for the object which I will uh, we will um, generate uh, in our all-up cube. Okay, I will do the same here. And now let me synchronize my data warehouse, and I hope our uh, data mart object now will be bound both this document types, you can see there is a difference between the fact and document types, and this calendar dimension, because we have we added the calendar ID uh, the, uh, the, using this calendar macro. Okay, what is missing here? Um, what do we miss here? We have maybe add some uh, measures, uh, some uh, like, for example, uh, one in one moment, uh, we will get the information about the measures from the link sat basic link sat table. This is table number eight, and we will take um, example quantity, and let me take uh, the amount. Okay, the M the R. This is this one. Okay, let's call it amount. Okay. Uh, one moment. Sorry. Let me do it again. Uh, and, uh, and the amount. We added two uh, columns containing information about the quantity and amount uh, okay. uh, from our fact transformation. Okay, I think our fact transformation is already is finished. And uh, now let's take a look on the data mart layer generated by analytics data. Uh, you can see, uh, for example, uh, every object in core layer uh, uh, as corresponding object in the data mart layer. Uh, how it works, if I click on this core layer object, I can see here this table stars and I can define in which data star this uh, object uh, uh, will uh, be exposed. Uh, in our case, as I mentioned, for the facts uh, uh, the uh, 
checkboxes fact should be marked, uh, should be checked. And uh, mm, you can see this is a uh, uh, transformation. Uh, okay. We, we, we create the fact transformation fact uh, in the data star in our data mart layer, and this data mart layer uh, has the structure uh, of our uh, Power BI uh, model, which we will generate. Uh, the structure of the Power BI model is the same like uh, the structure of our data mart layer. Okay, and what is interesting here, uh, le uh, let me click on the properties of our fact uh, transformation. Okay, you can see here the, the columns, uh, you can see here the relationships uh, which will be used uh, for uh, our OLAP uh, model, and I will add some measures. <coughs> I will add some measures. Uh, for example, I will, oh, one moment, uh, I forgot something. Let me click on synchronize the uh, After the data warehouse uh, will be synchronized, uh, we read some information back uh, from the generated data warehouse. Uh, and now uh, we can create the according measures. Okay. Have the amount we will use sum as the aggregate quantity sum. Let me take uh, LFA one and distinct count. This is the number of vendors and number of customers, for example. Uh, you can see you can define your measure names by yourself, or you can use the um, this template functionality. Uh, in our case, we use the templates to generate the names of me the measures. You can use, for example, aggregation name, column name, table name, and the generated measure name you can see in this parsed measure name column. Uh, because for the Power BI, it is very important that every measure in Power BI, the name of every measure should be unique. Therefore, uh, it is uh, really very uh, useful to use such templates for the measure names. You can, of course, create your own templates. Uh, you can store the templates as a basic template. and. Uh, or of course you can um, call every measures a measure uh, by yourself instead to use uh, the uh, templates for it and maybe let me add one uh, more measure go count oh uh, sorry I am here Oops. And uh, instead to use the uh, standard aggregate, I can use a tabular DAX statement row count. This is a DAX function from the table bookings. Uh, analysis data can uh, not only generate the Power BI or tabular OLAP models, but we can generate the multidimensional models uh, in uh, this case, for example, I would add another statement for the multidimensional OLAP cubes uh, in case uh, I would generate uh, the multidimensional OLAP cube. Okay, I hope my OLAP cube is ready. Uh, sorry, my model is ready. I did everything what I um, planned. Uh, and now we can... Okay, let me... Uh, synchronize again. Okay. Then, for example, if I will check my repository in Git, then I can save my repository as a file. Okay. This is just a SQL file. And it will be stored in the file. And later, I can load it back to the file if I will. Okay, 
or I can store my repository into the cloud, save to the cloud. For example, NTM repositories. Okay, I have already demo SAP data about. Do you see I have already here the demo SAP data about repository? I can store it again. But the previous version of the repository stored in the cloud will be not uh, deleted, but I take a look. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, the previous repositories say will be not deleted, but um, they uh, remain uh, in the cloud and I have always access. Ah, I thought, sorry, I stored it not in the cloud, uh, but. Uh, moment save to the cloud I should click on demo repositories I forgot to click on demo repositories directory moment and now when I click on load from cloud exactly uh, you have every time access to the previous versions of your repository the, on the top this is the most actual uh, version of the repository and this is the previous version of the repository Okay, uh, and now, but uh, at the moment, this is just a model and we have to deploy it. And uh, what we will do, we will deploy, we will create deployment package. Okay, new, we will deploy it on Azure. And uh, what we will do, uh, we will generate the deckpack file. This deckpack file, this is the most modern way how to deploy the, uh, the SQL Server databases. We will deploy, uh, sorry, uh, we will deploy this database. Okay, hello, data loss. Uh, here I have to, uh, because we will deploy this database, here I will uh, enter the name of my, the address of my SQL Server. And uh, I have the SQL Server uh, in Azure. Oops, one moment. Database, the SQL Server. And oops, wait. this is the name of my SQL Server. And uh, I already have the database, it's named AV. And I will deploy it there in this data, into this database. Okay, then I will generate integration service packages. Um, but one moment, sorry, I forgot something, but I forgot uh, something. Uh, this fact transformation is pretty complex. And uh, what I will, I will persist this fact transformation, this view. And let me add the persisting. This is one more thing which we can automatically create an analytics creator. I will create them. Yes, one. This is the name of persisting package where the persisting will be performed. Okay, synchronized. Uh -huh. But this is persisting. Uh, so you understood this uh, fact. Basically, this is the view. And um, to speed up access to this view, the content of the view can be stored in the table. Uh, uh, will be done using this persisting uh, persisting uh, step and uh, if we click on the properties of this persisting you can see the storage procedure to persist uh, um, the view will be created for every persisting the own storage procedure will be generated and uh, we have different kinds of persisting uh, full means the content of the um, persisting table will be deleted and every time the persisting table will be filled up uh, with uh, the data from the view. We have different um, uh, other types of the persisting, for example, merge or historical or incremental persisting uh, to speed up persisting. Uh, but in our case, we will use the full persisting. Okay, and now let me uh, create my uh, deployment package. Okay. Deployment package new in Azure. Create the pack, deploy the pack, then name of my 
the name of my SQL Server database. Database name AV. Okay, I will use standard security. Then we will generate integration service packages. There is a list of the integration service packages which will be generated. Uh, okay, uh, compatibility type of the databases, compatibility type of the SSS packages. Okay, now uh, to configure SSS packages, I will execute my SSS packages and uh, my Visual Studio. Uh, therefore, I will use environment variable to configure the packages. The uh, specific table SSS configuration will be created in the database and this table will contain the configuration for my SSS packages. Therefore, I will here check this checkbox deploy SSS configuration to fill up the SSS configuration table and uh, I will generate integration service packages I will and then I will create the uh, Power BI uh, model um, regarding Power BI how it works uh, to uh, be able to generate Power BI uh, model from analytics creator you need mm, you need uh, the Power BI uh, Premium. Uh, Power BI Premium uh, allows you uh, to avail, uh, allows you connect to connect to your Power BI using XML endpoint. And this XML endpoint, you can see it here. This is the address of the XML endpoint, and we can use this endpoint to deploy our uh, to deploy our Power BI models. Okay, DB name, um, okay, let's call it SIP uh, uh, demo SIP data valve. Okay, well, why not? Valve data valve. Okay. Okay, then I have to add here my credentials for Power BI. One moment. Which credentials do I have? Are here. The okay, compatibility level I should select Power BI and create cube during deployments. Very important. Okay, I hope I forgot nothing. Deploy, deploy, deploy. Okay, I will save my deployment package and let me deploy it. Okay, it will take some time uh, now you can see okay, okay analytics creator will generate the deployment package deployment package and analytics creator this is the visual studio solution or sql server data tools solution or visual studio solution uh, of the type integration uh, integration service project and uh, this solution contains everything what you need uh, to uh, deploy your data warehouse. After this solution is generated, you don't need analytics data anymore uh, because everything. Oops, for the moment, there is something wrong. Uh, with the OLAP cube, for the moment, column is not defined. Ah, one moment, sorry. Uh, I think I have the, the measure without name exactly. Uh, one moment, this is this one on the top. I don't know how I created it. And let me deploy again. Deploy, okay. Uh, as I said, analytics creator um, deployment package. Uh, this is a Visual Studio solution. And after this solution is created, don't need analytics data anymore. This solution, this is a typical Microsoft uh, AI solution containing everything what you need. It contains backpack file with the structure of the data warehouse, contains integration service packages, contains a XMLA file with uh, the Power BI uh, or SSS uh, database structure. Uh, we can generate generate Azure Data Factory pipelines, but in case of SIP, at the moment, if I'm not wrong, uh, 
Microsoft has no uh, 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 connector uh, to import the data from the SAP systems. Therefore, for the SAP, we uh, continue to use uh, integration service packages. But uh, uh, maybe when uh, there is a, a suitable connector and uh, Azure Data Factory for the SAP, we will be able to generate Azure Data Factory pipelines. We can generate Azure Data Factory pipelines uh, instead of SS packages, but in our case, we generated uh, the SS packages. Okay. And uh, let me take a look on the packages, on the solution which we generated. Open project or solution. Okay. Um, you can see for every time when we generate the new deployment package, the new subdirectory will be generated. And okay, here this is this deployment package generated by Analytics Creator. You can see this is a typical SQL Server Data Tools project or integration service project. Uh, here are the integration service packages and uh, uh, which packages were. Uh, uh, Will be generated by analytics data. You can see this is, a, for example, the import package where we import the data from uh, the SAP tables. And for every SAP table, the own container will be generated. And uh, okay, there's nothing specific. First, we get the data, we'll load the data from the SAP table, we calculate the number of the data rows, we perform the type transformations maybe if necessary. Then we are trying to use uh, bulk insert to uh, uh, insert the data into the input table. In case of errors, we are trying to insert the row and data row by row and uh, wrong data uh, will be stored in the specific uh, log table. Nothing specific, this is a typical integration service package. And uh, important is the uh, import will be performed uh, not sequentially, but uh, in parallel. Uh, therefore, uh, okay, it works uh, very fast, the import from the SAP. Okay, then uh, we have here the different historization uh, uh, packages. I don't know, for example, this uh, hist uh, sub. In this case, for every uh, historization, the own storage procedure will be generated by analytics creator, and the only uh, uh, what the integration service packages will do is uh, to call uh, according storage procedures. Okay, and so on for persisting, there is a persisting storage procedure which can be executed by the package. Uh, very important, there is a workflow package. Workflow package was generated by Analytics Creator and the workflow package uh, contains all other packages uh, uh, and every other package uh, will be executed in the correct order with the uh, according dependencies. You can see, uh, okay, first we store some information in the log table, we refresh the snapshot uh, table, we import the data, then uh, three uh, historization, no, four historization packages will be executed to historicize uh, links out, links, satellites, and hubs, um, uh, and then uh, the persisting uh, package will be executed at the last. And okay, that's all. And important is as a workflow package. This is uh, okay. usually you can create your create your own workflow packages, uh, but later you only have to execute this workflow package. To, uh, to, uh, to generate, uh, to execute your uh, uh, ATL process. Okay, um, then uh, what was generated by Analytics Gate additionally? Okay, let Hi, me come. Dimitri, I yes. just want to make a sh um, short reminder. Uh, we oh, have okay. 11 o'clock. Just okay, uh, I only um, 
need five minutes maybe. Uh, okay. Let me show you what what we generated. First, this is the database. Analytics, I connected uh, to the, our uh, uh, Azure data, uh, Azure SQL Server, and you can see this is this AV database generated by Analytics Creator right now, and this database contains the structure of our data warehouse. And uh, what I show additionally, this is a Power BI Holo Cube which we generated. This cube is located. Uh, this is a Microsoft Power BI, uh, well, located on the Microsoft Power BI Cloud. And let me connect to it. Okay. Get data from Power BI dataset. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Get data, Power BI datasets. Okay, and this is demo SAP data vault. This is this cube generated right now. Then uh, six, five, uh, 56, 10 minutes, 56 seconds, uh, right now for, for five minutes. And, okay, come on. Okay, this cube at the moment is empty. We have to proce process our uh, database and we have to process our all cube. But you can see here the structure of our all cube. Let me show you the data model generated by analytics creator you can see this is a typical data star in the middle this, this is our fact transformation bookings uh, with according uh, okay, measures uh, and so on and uh, on the top you can see uh, the dimensions well this is our uh, uh, Microsoft Power BI uh, Polar Cube and we generated uh, the SQL Server database on Azure, we generated integration services, we generated all of cubes, everything uh, from using Analytics Creator. Okay, I think um, I'm done uh, with my presentation. Uh, if you have questions, please, you can ask me. And of course, you can uh, download your trial version of Analytics Creator uh, and try to create the same solution by yourself. It is very easy. Thank you, Dimitri, for your presentation and for your time. Uh, so is does anyone have a question for Dimitri? I will, by the way, I will also, uh, I will add again the meeting link uh, into chat. So if you want to, uh, talk about your um, business, about your data warehouse, about your processes. You can book a meeting through or meeting link, and then we can talk in that in more detail. I'm sending the link, meeting link, and also I will send the other links uh, from our website, uh, LinkedIn page, YouTube channel. I'm sending all the links again. Um, I will be sending uh, the video, the this recording in two weeks, uh, all over to you. And yeah, let me check. No questions right now. Uh, so I think we don't have any question. Okay, then. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you uh, for attending. Okay. Have a nice day. Wish you have a nice Bye. day and also have a nice weekend.